My name is Daniel Kim and I'm an emergency physician here in Vancouver. Today I'm going to demonstrate lung ultrasound scanning. Because lung ultrasound scanning depends on ultrasound artifacts, it's best to set your machine to a lung preset before you start. However, if your machine does not have a lung preset, it's best to turn off any image optimization that you might have turned on. So for example, turn off harmonics, decrease the frequency, and try to make the image look as grainy as possible. For lung ultrasound scanning, the idea is to try to interrogate as much of the chest as possible. You therefore divide each hemithorax or each chest into six zones. The landmarks that we're going to use are our anterior axillary line and our posterior axillary line. Essentially, that's going to delineate our anterior chest, our axillary chest, and our posterior chest. Each area is going to be divided into an upper and a lower zone. So that basically provides us with six different scanning areas. We're going to want to place the ultrasound probe with the marker pointed upwards in a vertical position in the midclavicular line. So our landmarks here are going to be our ribs. Our ribs are going to be hyperechoic with black shadowing behind. So they're going to be bright and white with black shadowing behind. We're interested in the bright hyperechoic pleural line in between. It's going to have a shimmering movement as we visualize it. You want to ensure that the scanning of the lung is performed to a perpendicular angle to the pleural line to best visualize it. Effectively you want to visualize normal sliding at that line at multiple interspaces. Normal aerated lung will have horizontally oriented reverberation lines called A lines that go deeper into the screen um, and that's essentially normal. So we'll start here up in the upper lung zone on this uh, anterior aspect of the chest and we'll start scanning downwards. So we'll visualize another interspace. We'll visualize another interspace and we will slowly move down towards the lower field of the anterior lung until we get down to the liver. For visualizing the axillary area of the lung, we'll start at the liver kidney interface. And the idea here is to visualize the diaphragm, which is the hyperechoic bright curved line above the liver. Here you can angle the probe upwards or slide the probe upwards to identify if there's a pleural effusion or not. In this case, there's not a pleural effusion. If there's no pleural effusion, slide the probe upwards until you get visualization of your typical landmarks of the ribs and the pleural line. Again, we see normal sliding. And to be more comprehensive, continue scanning up towards the upper axillary aspect of the lung until you get right into the axilla and can't visualize any further. So we can see again, normal lung sliding with normal A-lines. At this point, to visualize the posterior chest, you would have the patient sit up. Here it's helpful to have the patient internally rotate both arms or both shoulders to move the scapula off to the side laterally to expose more of the upper lung. It's helpful to start low down. And identify your liver. That way you know that you are at the inferior lung edge. And again, we are going to slide upwards and look for our typical landmarks of our ribs with our pleural line in between. So again, we can see normal sliding with A-lines. And you want to interrogate as much of the lung as possible as you slide up towards the upper lung fields. And again, we see more normal lung. And we're going to try to maintain our scanning approach to be perpendicular to the pleural line. So that's a reasonably comprehensive approach of looking at each hemithorax. Uh, it's a typical six-zone approach that's described in the literature.